In partnership with the United Nations Democracy Fund, the Mediator for Democracy and Human Rights launched the Youth for Democracy project in March 2013, aiming to strengthen the capacities of young people in the areas of democracy, human rights, governance, and the evaluation of public policies. Soon after the project began, the mediator organized four communication meetings in Casablanca, Tangier, and Agadir, with more than 250 young men and women, introducing to them the project, its approach, and activities. This process attracted more than 500 applications for participation in the project. A special committee was formed to examine the applications, ending its work by selecting 178 participants as the core group targeted by the project. The project activities began by organizing the first university from the 2nd to the 5th of January 2014 in Buznica, and its proceedings revolved around three main units. The first unit was about the constitution, the division of powers, and the parliament and its functions, and was animated by professors Mohamed Melki, Ahmed Hidrani, and Ahmed Mufid. The second unit was about democracy and governance, and was animated by professors Abdurrahman Al Amrani and Ali Ram. The third unit, about human rights, was animated by professors Abdulwahad Latir, Latif Al Bahsini, and Sumaya Amrani. Three months later, the participants were invited for the second university on the 17th, 18th, and 19th of April 2014 in Buznica, during which the professors carried out training sessions for the participants to enhance their knowledge about the evaluation of public policies through two main axes, principles and approaches in the evaluation of public policies through the Constitution of 2011, animated by professors Nadir Al-Mumni, Hassan Tarak, and Mohamed Murghadi and the evaluation of public policies through the Finance Act, animated by Professors Atman Kher, Ahmed Buz, and Sumir Amrani. The presentations delivered by the professors during the two universities formed important platforms for the participants to ask their questions and share their views on various issues and problems related to each unit. And by tracing the degree of their commitment to universities, the selection committee was closely following the contributions of the participants by recording their observations and impressions in form and substance, and by tracing the degree of their commitment. On April the 20th, the participants gathered for the Future Conference, which is one of the newly developed methods for teamwork projects, and is based on the anticipation technique and imagination through role-playing, and analyzing the present condition to develop visions for the future. This was carried out by the young participants who were divided into six political parties to introduce their programs and debate over the sectoral policies of priority for each political body. This phase of the project was also of great importance in the assessment of the level of performance of the participants to select the group that will move to the stage of parliamentary committees. With 60 participants being selected to engage in the process of the evaluation of a range of sectoral policies, a new phase of the project kicked off with two work sessions of the parliamentary committees. The first session of the parliamentary committees 
took place in Rabat from the 25th to the 28th of September 2014, and focused on the government's commitments and its midterm achievements in six sectoral policies. During this session, the participants in the project had the chance to attend 12 presentations given by professors and experts in the field of sectoral policies. The second session of the Parliamentary Committees was held from the 23rd to the 26th of October 2014 in Rabat. Through various practical workshops and role-play sessions conducted by the 60 participants, three political parties emerged with their parliamentary caucuses sorted out. These caucuses would subsequently work on the initial versions of the questions related to the evaluation of the group's achievements. On the 29th of November 2014, the mediator organized a seminar for the presentation of the proceedings of the parliamentary committees within the second edition of the World Human Rights Forum in Marrakesh, with the aim to train the participants on oral questions through role-play activities. On January 14, 2015, to promote youth involvement in parliamentary affairs, the mediator set up a meeting between the representatives of the participants in the project and representatives from the different parliamentary groups and permanent committees in the House of Representatives. This meeting was an opportunity to debate over the sectoral policies subject to the participants' assessment. Eager to share this experience and to create focus groups to facilitate its dissemination, the mediator organized, in coordination with the young participants in the project, two regional meetings in Wujda and Layoun. With the participation of nearly 50 associations active in the field of democracy, human rights, and social development, together with other civic bodies. As a culmination, with the presence of a group of academics and political and civic actors, the young participants were brought together in a political forum organized on April 11, 2015, to discuss the issue of youth and political participation. On June 1, 2015, after two years of capacity-building activities for youth, the mediator brought into play the closing session of the project of Youth for Democracy inside the building of the House of Councillors. This assembly was characterized by the presence of all the young participants involved in the project since its inception, as well as members of the Parliament from the House of Councillors and the House of Representatives, and representatives of different national institutions, political and civic bodies political organizations, and youth political organizations, together with the diplomatic community, the United Nations agencies, and the international organizations working in Morocco, and various media. Nine young participants, representing three political parties, had the chance to direct their evaluative questions to three ministers representing the current government coalition. Mohamed Hamdan asked questions related to the national education sector, by focusing on decisive issues like the language of teaching, primary education, and school dropout rate. <laughs> Rahma Rugi raised the issue of the increasing rates of unemployment with regard to the labor policy adopted by the government. 
تقارير والدراسات الصادرة بخصوص وضعية الشوف في بلادنا خصوصا منها الصادرة على المندوبية السامية للتخطيط تؤكد على ارتفاع معدل البطالة منذ بداية هذه الحكومة ليستقر مؤخرا 9.9% علما أن هذا الرقم يخفي وراءه حقيقة أخرى كتجلى في ارتفاع معدل البطالة في العالم القرابي Always within the framework of the social sectors, Hayat Mishnen focused her question on the existing imbalances in the health sector. ما كيتعداش خمسة د المراكز استشفائية جامعية بينما تعهدات الحكومة بإحدى ثلاث مراكز استشفائية جديدة وهي طنجة وأكادير وعيون وهي التعهدات التي لم يتم الوفاء بها اليوم The last question for the social sectors was asked by Ashraf Shahbun who targeted the problems related to the housing sector سيد الوزير نسائلكم عن أسباب تراجع وتيرة الإنجاز بالنسبة للوحدات السكنية اللي تعهدات بها الحكومة وما مدى احترام وصفات ديال الجودة فيما تم بناؤه وفيما تم انجازه من سكن هذاك الشيء اللي تبنى فينا ما المواصفات ديال الجوده اللي كتضمن اللي كتضمن دفاتر ديال التحملات حيت كنلقى غير انه كتواتر الحاله ديال الغش سواء في الاشغال سواء في البناء سواء في الاشغال الامر اللي كيخلي على ان العائلات اللي كتلتح بالسكن الجديد ديالها كتحمل اعباء ماليه جديده لحد الادنى ديالها واحد ثلاثه ديال مليون سنتيم In her replies to the questions on the social sectors Ms. Sharafat Afilal Minister Delegate to the Minister of Energy Mines water and environment highlighted the achievements of the government and the imbalances still existing in each sector بالفعل بين الاكراهات اللي اللي نجيب الاقرار بها لم تنجح في هذه الحكومه هذه ولكن ايضا الحكومات السابقه في في النهوض بهذا القطاع التشغيلي انه لا يسائل فقط وزاره التشغيل ولكن يسائل سياسه عموميه باجملها Immediately after the minister's responses to the participants questions on the social sectors A question on the foreign affairs sector was asked by the young participant Aziza Bidad who raised issues related to the fate of the Maghreb Union and the Moroccan diplomatic performance. The Minister of Foreign Affairs with the Foreign Affairs Diplomacy led to the discussion about the diplomacy of the Maghreb and the new strategy of the geostrategy which you have been talking about and you have been talking about a number of the priorities of the government أو المملكة في القطاع الخاص بالسياسة الخارجية وهي الأولويات التي حددتموها في ملف الصحراء وفي حماية مصالح الجالية المغربية المقيمة بالخارج وكذا تعزيز الشراكات الاقتصادية ودعم وتشجيع الدبلوماسية الثقافية هذه كلها أولويات ذات أهمية كبيرة فهل هناك من تقييم خاص لدى الحكومة للأداء الدبلوماسي؟ وهل هناك استراتيجية للوزارة لملائمة وتأهيل الأداء الدبلوماسي مع الحاجيات المنبثقة من صميم هذه الأولويات؟ Ms. Mbarak Abouida, Minister Delegate to the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation, responded to the question of the participant Aziz Abadad and raised the involvement of youth in monitoring and evaluating public policies. Questions on the economy and finance sector were asked by the participant Mustafa Karami who raised the issue of reform of the pension system. ما هي رؤية الحكومة اليوم لإصلاح شامل ومندمج ومستدام لأنظمة التقاعد وفق مقاربة تشاركية مع مختلف الفرقاء الاقتصاديين والاجتماعيين؟ ياسين تامورت chose to investigate the interior affairs sector by questioning issues like the right to exercise freedom of expression and the outcome of the government's work regarding the activation of communal development plans. استنفذت المخططات الجماعية التنمية كتجربة مدة ست سنوات بمعنى انها ولايه نسائل الحكومه عن هل هذه الحكومه اليوم تتوفر على تقييم لحصيله هذه المخططات التنميه 
ونقصد بذلك تفعيلها خصوصا اننا ناخذ بعين الاعتبار المعطيات المهمه اولا المعطيات الرقميه التي تشير الى ان عدد ما يزيد عن 500 جماعه ترابيه اليوم لا تتوفر على مخطط للتنميه في حين ان زيد من 1000 جماعه ترابيه تتوفر على هذا المخطط لكنها تعترضها مشاكل في تنفيذه او ما زالت لم تنفذه لاسباب اخرى لا نعلمها With regard to the justice and freedom sector, El Mehdi El Miskini suggested organizing a national day of justice to contribute to the strengthening of the elements of a fair trial. فنحن نقترح لكم سيد الوزير ولما لا يتم التفكير في احداث يوم وطني للعداله حيث معه نختار عشر احكام قضائيه من مختلف الجهات ذات طبيعه مختلفه يتم افتحاصها على مجموعه من المستويات للتحقق ايضا من سلامه الاجراءات قبل وخلال المحاكمه وايضا مدى توافق منطق الحكم مع المقتضيات القانونيه The last questioning was carried out by Sena Hafud, who targeted the media and communication sector through questions related to issues like the updating of the press and publications law and the creation of the parliamentary channel, as well as the National Observatory for the promotion of the image of women in the media. تكريس اختزال العمل البرلماني في الجلسات العامه والاسئله الشفويه دون تمكين المواطنين من تتبع كل المهام التي تقوم بها المؤسسه التشريعيه خاصه على مستوى اشغال اللجان وباقي انشطه البرلمان وعليه بغينا نعرفوا منكم سيد الوزير سبب هذا التاخر والتردد within the framework of government solidarity مصطفى الخلفي minister of communication and the government spokesman responded to all the questions related to the media and communication sector, the economy, the finance sector, interior affairs sector, and justice and freedom sector. In the government, there were changes. There were changes and changes that were supposed to be used. We had to use it as a result of a change. We had to use it as a result of a change. This is the issue of the Muslim community that improves the image of the woman in the world. And in fact, it's a result. I don't have a very strong opinion. In order to ensure the sustainability of this experience, the mediator organized on June 29th in Rabat a workshop which took the form of an open dialogue with the presence of the young participants in the project of Youth for Democracy and representatives of some national and international bodies and organizations. During this workshop, Participants put forward various ideas related to the future of this experience and how to develop and transfer this project to the other regions, with the aim of transplanting the evaluation and monitoring techniques in local contexts. The workshop was also an opportunity to learn about the latest developments of the project and to motivate young people to engage in civil and political action. The Youth for Democracy project gave the opportunity to 200 young men and women from different regions of Morocco to strengthen their capacities and express their attitudes and opinions through various activities. It enabled them to deal with various issues, especially those related to the monitoring and evaluation of public policies. It also gave the opportunity to hundreds of young people to follow the evolution of this work by having access to rich materials available on special pages in social networks and on the youth forum on the website of the project and through the newspaper the voice of youth